Okay, there we go. Welcome. All right, tonight we're going to talk about how to accurately predict market direction using a high win ratio system, which is a system that I created based on stocks gapping. And actually, the market had a very strong move today, so we will talk about this if we have time at the end. Depending on questions, we'll pull up the current market chart today. We ended up closing very strong today after gapping down this morning. So it's been a very bullish market this year, 2019. And whether you trade stocks or futures or whatever you do, it is important, I think, to look at the overall market. It can help you make more money uh, when you are trading. This is me. I think everyone's seen me. And I appear on Fox Business and Fox News. If you have any questions or are interested in my class and learning my method, you can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can also email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I put a lot of different content on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, so it's good to follow me at those places, especially if you're interested in seeing plays of the days or webinar recordings like tonight. Okay? Thank you, Kathy. So a lot of people uh, that are thinking about trading feel that they know how to trade, but they're not making money. Um, I had somebody say that to me actually this morning. Well, they've been trading for, you know, 10 years. Well, that doesn't mean that they're doing well. Just because you've been trading for a long time, if you're not profitable year after year after year, then you really don't know how to trade. What's the most important thing that's going to make you become a profitable trader or turn you into a profitable trader? A good strategy, a good system. And obviously, good money management, which means what? Something as simple as risking a similar amount in every trade you take. Something like that is important, okay? Because you can't risk $100 in one trade and $1,000 in another trade. You can't have your risk all over the place. <laughs> and earnings season starts this week. So right before, I say, look at your risk. Maybe you can up your risk if you did well last quarter. Maybe you can... Maybe you didn't do as well as you could have done last quarter. Maybe you need to lower your risk. Earnings season is a good time to lower your risk or raise your risk before earnings season starts. So if you're trading right now and you are not making money, you've come to the right place because we're going to talk here tonight a little bit about what I do. And again, if you're interested, I teach a class on this and the class is this weekend. It's April 13th and 14th. So it's a good timing for the class right at the start of this earnings season. Now, my strategy is based on stocks gapping. There are, are tons of different strategies and systems out there. Okay, this one specifically is a unique way that I developed where I will look at the gap and I rate the gap. Now, I rate the gap based on what? The daily chart. So this is a daily chart. This is a daily chart of BA. And this actually was a nice trade from this morning that you could have done. You could have done this as a day trade you could have done this as an option trade. It was a short, and as an option, it was a put, and it worked, okay? So let's go over what a gap is. This closed here the night before, which was Friday, and gapped down here. So it closed around, I don't know the exact price here, 390 something, and it opened in the morning here around 380 something, 379-ish. So a gap is a difference between the close and the open. Stocks can gap down, in this case here, from Friday to Monday morning, or they can gap up. Now let's look at a gap up. This was a gap up over here. Stock closed here and gapped up. I'm going back to January. There's many gap ups in here. There's some in here too, but I'm just pointing out the very obvious one here. Today though, the stock was a short, okay? So it is important to know the direction that something's going to go before it does it so you know to take the trade. If the stock's going to drop, you want to short it to make money. If the stock's going to rally and move higher in price, then you want to go long it to make money. That's just trading 101. The difficulty that many people have is they don't know where it's going to go. They don't know if it's going to go up and they don't know if it's going to go down. And in the morning this morning, BA had an initial lift. And some people may have gone long the stock. The stock opened here hovering right on this blue line, which is a, a 20 period moving average. So a lot of people probably thought it was going to go higher and sit its butt on the 20. And also BA is in an uptrend, 
okay? Just so you know. But the fact is that I raided the gap this morning and it raided not to go long it, but to short it, okay? And again, if you have any questions, just write them in the room. So how can you make money trading gaps? Again, this is what I do, what you learned from me. And I found that gaps are a very good indicator or way of reading and predicting price action. It's one of the reasons I've called the market so well. So how can you make money trading gaps? Well, the information that you find in a gap tells you a lot. So what happens? Again, it's between the close and the open. So trades go off after four o'clock and before 9.30. And those trades that occur in that period of time, okay, whatever amount of the volume that it is, whatever amount it is, whatever is creating the gap itself, again, whether it's up or down, tells you something. And that information you can use to make money. Now, again, we're not entering the trades in the post market and we're not entering trades in the pre market. We're entering trades on the live day, just so you know. But it's good information. It's important information. It tells you something, okay, if you know what to look for. Make sense? And I found that it's more important than anything else. And it's a better indicator of price action than anything else more so than moving averages or any other indicators and people love indicators traders love indicators and if you're new to trading and you're not a trader at all just so you know uh there's a bazillion indicators that you could put on any given chart the computer figures it out you just plop them on i have very few on my charts i like clean charts but i do have a few but you can't live and die by them and a lot of times traders want to live and die by indicators and half the time trades work, half the time they don't, or more than half the time they don't. Because it's, if it was that easy to just go long on a moving average or short into resistance or whatever, then it would be very easy to make money in the market for pretty much everyone. Because anyone can read a moving average. All right? Anyone can read a Fibonacci line. Anyone can read any of that stuff. That's not hard. It's, 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 it's assessing the information it's looking at a chart like this, which is the SPY. This was from Friday. This isn't today's. And, and assessing it and saying, where are we going from here? And you say, well, where are we going? Actually, I am going to pull up, pull up the market here today before I keep going here in a second. Just because this is today's evidence of the strength in the market is just outstanding is the best way I would put it. And here's the SPY. Can everybody see the market? We're getting bought here tonight. The reason doesn't even matter. Can everyone see this? Hello, is anyone there? Is anyone alive? Am I talking to myself? Where is everybody? Hello, can you see the chart? Bogey, I cannot believe you're here. Bogey? has been at every webinar I've ever done for the last 11 years and never done the class. Bogey, I don't know if you'll ever do the class, but you come to every webinar I ever do, which is hilarious. There's Lefty, okay. We got some people that are alive and awake. So anyways, as I was saying, okay, look at the chart and look at the strength of this market <laughs> and the reason that i say that is because and i'm gonna blow this up in a second so this was friday and this looked amazing and then we were actually up sunday night like i thought we were gonna get up sunday night we didn't we didn't but anyways long story short that would have been just taken off but we didn't we ended up opening slightly down today this counts as a gap down so i'm just going to show you we closed friday i'm going to be very exact here we closed at 288.57 we opened at 288.10 that counts i mean that's a that's a gap down i know it's only 47 cents but still anyways the point is that we opened down today then we fell a little bit 
that was the tally thing here, okay? Actually, let me pull up the one minute here quickly. We did. Here's here. I thought we did. We fell for the first 15 minutes of the day. So here's the sell off. Boom, boom, boom. First 15 minutes we sold off. That's the tail in the daily chart. We sold off and we could have kept selling off is my point, but we didn't. Okay. We did not keep selling off. So how did we not keep selling off, which we very well could have, if somebody's having trouble hearing me, canoe, does canoe have sound? Does everybody hear me? I don't know if it's just him. Does everybody hear me or not? Here, I can reset the mic real quick. Hold on. Got it now? All right, good. All right, getting back to what I was saying about the market, we, we started falling today. We fell for the first 15 minutes, and then we went nowhere. And we could have, is the point that I'm trying to say here. We could have fallen off a planet. We didn't, but we could have. And we could have because the market gapped down, number one. And even if we had fallen today, it wouldn't have changed anything about the look of this chart. But I'm saying here, the fact that we barely fell at all, we only fell in the first 15 minutes of the day, and the fact that we even rallied and closed over Friday's high, which we did, the fact that we gapped down and dropped and made a taily guy and flipped around is what? What does that tell you? Just anybody, somebody here, Galahad, Lefty, anyone, Dee Dee, what does it tell you? quizzing you here before I go back to the PowerPoint. The fact that we fell and the fact that we flipped around and the fact that we got down and the fact that we dropped for 15 minutes and then turned around and went over Friday's high means what? Yes, it means bullish, but what really occurred? What? I mean, the market is bullish. A bum on the street in New York, in Times Square, would be able to read this chart. But what is it really, what, what happened? What occurred? What makes a thing do what it did today? Whether this is the market or anything else, what makes something do that? Come on, this is trading 101, people. The bum on the street would know. The bum on the street would say, Melissa, well, that's pretty easy. Yes, you had buyers. That's right. The market got bought. It, it got bought today. And uh, it just like, it just got bought. It just went poop and just scooped it up. Like, a, like you're going into the dirt with a shovel to plant your spring flowers. You just dig a hole and it just scooped up the dirt and threw it. And the market got bought again today. Again! Okay. So, a beautiful example here of what you would learn from me. Because if you would rated the gap down today, you would not have shorted it. Although people attempted to do just that. They didn't fare very well here, as you can see. Because the market dropped and then flipped over. All right. So, the market's been getting bought even in a weird area like it is right now. Now, I'm pointing out a trade here that I call it, I do options trades and equity trades, but this was an options trade, and we're talking about the market that I called, not this past Friday, but the previous Friday, which was March 29th. It was an option that expired last Friday that worked. I called the 282 spike calls to buy the market, and on this day, the market fell. And then the next following day, which was Monday, I think Monday was April 1st, yeah, the market gapped up big. And then this trade was immediately up. 
And that, my friends, is what you would learn from me because you are predicting the move before the move occurs. It's That's how you make money. You want to take the trade before the move occurs. Otherwise, it's not like it's too late, but it pretty much is, and you get a poor entry. And when you get a bad entry in a trade, I don't care what kind of trade you do, a swing trade, an option trade, a day trade, if you have a crappy entry, it's, it's really stressful, at least to me. The entry is everything once I'm in it. Now, whether I hold it or get out early or hold it till forever, I mean, that is, I have the choice. When you have a good entry in something, though, you do have the choice. And that's the nice thing about looking and assessing it and getting in before the thing happens, okay? So this was the 29th. On the Friday when I called the market call and it went doop and it was all the way up here. So it opened right at 285-ish or thereabouts. It opened $3 over the strike in this trade. It was a really, really nice call. Beautiful thing. You just take the trade on Friday and you roll out of bed on the Monday morning and you're up money without even doing a thing. You spent the whole weekend doing nothing, and then you made money on Monday morning. And that is a beautiful thing. So here was this trade, if you had done it, and I'm going to go over an advanced risk, but we are going to talk today about advanced and beginner for the trade today, which was BA, which I'm going to go over. Cost of this trade was $1.90 or thereabouts, wherever you get filled. 30 contracts. Again, your risk needs to be close to the same on every trade. 5700 is 30 contracts price with $1.90. Sold at 640. That this went through that number though. This is one of those unique trades that you could have literally held all week. 13,500. Beautiful, beautiful investment. 237% return on investment. So you took a trade and you turned it over more than twice. Okay. Now every trade is not like that, but some are. And the reason I'm showing you this here is because of this situation which can happen and is really nice. And actually, this could, that could happen tomorrow. So I don't know where we open tomorrow morning, but like tonight, guess what? We're gapping up. We're up tonight in the after hours. Again, I don't know if we gap up tomorrow morning. That's a long way away, but we could. And, you know, I mean, who's to say where we do and where we go? I'll rate the gap. But you can make money if you're in a position, if it goes in your direction overnight. And, and that's what is the benefit of doing the options trades, okay? Any questions so far? <clears throat> okay. Anyways, oh, here's the spy woman over this already. Anyways, I also called the cues that same day, March 29th, 180 was a strike, another nice one. Uh, not as big of a move as a spy overnight, but still a beautiful trade. Cost was two. Risk six grand, sold for 60, 7,800, return investment 130%. Again, if you had bought in three contracts, which would have amounted to 300 shares, it would have been a $600 risk and you could have made $780. That's still a really nice profit for a trade that you just took and got out just by just sitting there on your butt because it gapped up from Friday to Monday and then it just ran last week. And here is the cues. This was the day I called it and it went poop. And then it just went doop and it went. And this is, you know, what I call easy trading. But of course you have to be able to determine that this is going to occur. Uh, the cues are closer than the SPY. I just want to point this out over here that had made a previous high back in October. This is 2018. We're in 2019 now. So you see how we're really getting close. In fact, let's pull that up tonight because we may actually do that. Um, Gosh darn it, we might make a new highs in the queues tomorrow. Oh my Atlanta, I'm just seeing this here now. Hold on. Well, we're getting close. 187.53. This is ridiculous list. Has anyone even noticed this? Galahad, I didn't even really look much at the queues today at all, to be honest with you. This is crazy town. So I was, I said really we'd make brand new all-time highs of the market first half of this year. I was giving it till the end of June. Jeez Louise. We're, we, I mean, this looks like we could do it even tomorrow. I mean, I don't know for sure. Don't quote me here, but look, look how close we are. Like we could gap up here tomorrow and go poop. We're up tonight. Wow. We could, we could do that this week. And the FOMC minutes are Wednesday. 
So, all right, let me get back to what I was saying. Anyways, this was a nice call, and it's been following through. This was in the queues. So that's the queues and the spy. And when I refer to the market, that's what I'm looking at. And sometimes I look at the diamonds. And people like to talk about that. I talk about that on TV because it's the Dow ETF. But really, I think the spy is a really good indicator because you have more stocks in that ETF, and you don't have as much weight on things like Apple and stuff as you do in the queues. And actually, Apple rallied today. That's probably also why the queues have been so strong too in the last couple of days. But all in all, I think it is important to learn how to read the market. It is difficult for many people to do. I've done a good job with it, but I focus on gaps. That's what's allowed me to see this. And the market looks very strong. And if you're in money and invested in the market in retirement accounts, you've seen a nice lift since the end of uh, 2018. So you can, you can just trade the market if you want. And that was the point I'm trying to make here and what I wanted to bring up tonight. If you wanted to just trade the market, you could do that. Now, you may not do it every day. If you don't get good gaps in the market every day, you do not. But when you do, that can be very profitable for day trades and for options. Okay? Any questions here so far? Now, what else do I do? I focus in the morning between Monday and Friday, in the first 30 minutes of the day, sometimes the first hour, on stocks that are gapping that I'm looking at to trade to get in and out quickly. That could be anything, could be anything at all. Today, in the case, it was BA. Now, some people got out of BA quickly, some people held it a little bit. But in the beginning part of the day, it's an important time to look at stocks and to get, again, big moves. Sometimes we get out in five minutes, sometimes 15 minutes, sometimes I'll hold something if I think a bigger move is expected, which is the case today. But either way, whether you got out quick today or whether you held it, it was a profitable trade. We shorted BA today. But this period, this time frame, is what you need to block out in your life if you wanted to be active in the trading room between Monday and Friday, if you wanted to trade in the trading room with me. And anyone that's interested in an open house, if you'd like an open house for this week, you can email me at melissa.thestockswish.com. Kathy can put my email address in there, and, and I won't email you. Anyways, I get this question a lot. Can you do this if you're a beginner? Yes, you can. Dee Dee is a beginner. She's been doing well, I think. Dee Dee, are you there? And I have a bunch of other people that have just joined recently in the last month, even still, G5. I don't see her hair tonight, but she's new. She's been practicing. And you can learn how to do this if you've never traded in your life. The best thing you can do is, guess what? Follow me. Some people are good at following me. Some people have a problem following me. I think that I'm easy to follow. The people that have a problem following me, there are people that have gotten in their head about stuff that they should do that they learn from other people that doesn't work and they have to kind of flush that information down the toilet and that can be challenging for you mentally. So know that coming into it if you want to learn from me. You may have to unlearn things that you've done in the past that do not work and you it's like fighting the demons. To me, I think it's very easy. When somebody doesn't work, why in the world would you ever do it again? Okay. Dee Dee's doing well. Wonderful. That's good news. Dee Dee is a student. If you have mental problems about letting go of bad habits, all I can tell you is flush them down the toilet. Spit, spit, spit. It's time to have a new uh, attitude and realize that holding on to old dogma and stuff that you've done in the past just doesn't serve you anymore. We're very habitual people as human beings. We tend to do things based on habits, even if they're not good habits. We're very habitual. You may not think you follow habits, but you do. And usually we're very programmed, even like how we sleep and what we eat and when we eat and what we do with our trains and checking our phones and everything. I mean, human beings are very, very habitual. They're, and and you, don't, you may not realize it, but you are. So think about that with your trading because it can help you maybe change some things. But a strategy is very important to make money in the market because you're not going to make money if you don't have a good strategy, period. End of story. You might say, well, I'm going to do this because I heard it on TV and everybody else is doing it. And maybe you make money doing it, but you're never going to be able to replicate or duplicate that same trade again, even if it works. So a strategy is something that you want to find to do that will be consistent that you can do over and over and over again in any market condition and in any way. Swing trade, option day trade. You want to be able to replicate it. It's the consistency. That's what counts. That's what's going to make you successful. All right? 
And again, I'm going to go back to, to uh, being in a habit. And, it, and it's really about like a routine. Like, let's just say you were training for a marathon. God, I don't know when the marathon is in New York. Oh, it's November. November. So it's, a, it's seven months away or something, eight months away. So the, the marathon in November is in, in New York. Well, you want to get ready for it. You got to train. If you start the week before, you're probably not going to make it through the whole thing. It's long and it's hard. So you got to start training now. You got eight months and you got to do it every day and you got to follow it and you got to exercise and you got to eat right and you have to follow the trainer and you have to do all the things. That's what really training is too. I'm the trainer and you are working out and you are preparing for the big race. And if you do that, again, you'll make it to the top and, and you know, I don't know if you'll win. But at least you'll make it through and can say, well, I finished the New York Marathon. Once in a lifetime thing. Okay. So it's about being consistent. Staying in a routine. Doing the same thing day after day after day after day. Okay. And not deviating from it. So again, how can you make money in the market? Consistency. Consistency in strategy. Consistency in money management. Doing what you need to do even when you think it's difficult. And that's really when it, it is the most important to do that thing. So, you know, you might say, well, it's hard today. This trade didn't work. Do I want to stop? Should I do another one? People tend to say, well, I want to double down or flip it around. No, don't do that, okay? Today's example, the market was a good thing. People probably shorted it, saw it didn't work, shorted it again, lost, flipped, went long. I mean, people don't know what to do with this market. And why? People are having a really hard time believing that the market is continuing to rally. People almost can't believe it. I can't say that I can't believe it because I called it. But I will say I'm surprised that it's not letting up at all. But it isn't, so go with it. You can't fight City Hall. You go with momentum, and that's the nice thing about gaps, or at least good gaps. The thing I love about gaps. But if you're interested in day trading, if you're interested in doing it, if you're interested in learning what I, what I do then you can do this for a living and you can be anywhere in the world. You do not have to live in New York to day trade. You don't have to go down to the stock exchange every day. I've been down there a bunch of times for TV segments. It's very small. It's the tiniest, tiniest place in the world. <laughs> yeah, I mean, once you get down there, you're like, oh, this is it. Like, you think this is this huge, massive thing. It's so small down there. But the nice thing about trading is you can be at your home. You could live in California. You could be in Nevada. You can be anywhere. You could be in a different country and trade. You do have to be concerned about the time zone difference, which is between 9.30 and 10 when we're focused, which is right into the open Eastern time zone. So depending on where you are in the world, you have to think about that with your schedule. Does it work for you? Now, the options trades, you just get emailed to you. Those you can do wherever you are, okay? So think about if you really want to get serious about doing this, if it fits your schedule, which is be between what? Between 9.30 and 10 a.m., okay? Also... Do you think that you'll like taking fast trades, which we're going to go over BA. That, that was a fast move in the morning. Are you okay with doing those quick moves? And also, do you have a passion and interest in learning the market? Maybe you don't know. You don't know how you feel about it. I definitely have a passion for chart reading. It's something that I learned very quickly on that I liked a lot. I think that's important because I'm a technical analysis person, and if you don't like reading charts, it may be difficult for you. But for me, it's fun, all right? And I actually think learning new things is fun. If you're not used to learning new things or you find that hard, you kind of have to get over that. But if you're willing to learn something new and you want to work from home and you want to work from yourself, then you can learn how to trade and I can teach you. It really is about having the right focus. I was extremely focused with today. The trade today was, was a good example of that. Uh, BA may not have worked today. It did, but it might not have. Why? The stock has been all over the place. It's been crazy the last month or so. Some days it gaps down and rallies. Some days it gaps down and falls. Some days it gaps up. I mean, it's been a mess. Again, it was news today in BA. It's been a news event for the last month. Every day it seems like it's gapping. Today was very focused that we got it at the exact right time and played it exactly correct. Okay? Focus helps.
helps you do better and helps you make more money, okay? Any questions so far? So really, one strategy in my philosophy is all you need to be successful in the market. You don't have to be a jack of all trades. You have to be good at one thing. And I'm reading institutional money in gaps. That's how I'm determining that they're getting bought up or falling and getting sold off and dropping, in which case we would short them or sell them. But ideally, your goal is to make money. If you can make money, then you've succeeded. But you have to make money consistently. It's not about one trade. And the way that I do that is through reading gaps, and it's really price forecasting. So what is that? It's I'm using forecasting as use of historic data to determine the direction of future trends. So I'm looking at the market and determining that it's higher, and so on and so forth, okay? And so that's how you play it. Now, we may play something like BA today, which I forecasted was lower on the day. It doesn't mean I'm forecasting that it's lower in the long term. But on the day, again, if you're a day trader, you can play something for five minutes and forecast the movement of it for that short, short period of time and make money and profit. This forecasting doesn't have to be something where you're forecasting out for 12 months from now or six months from now or even six days from now, okay? But I'm reading what's happening in the live moment for the purpose of profit. And I'm forecasting what's happening with institutions. Now, for those of you that don't know what institutional money is, it's hedge funds, big banks that take positions, big traders. I'm talking about huge sizes in stocks that would actually move a stock if it took a position, and that is what occurs. And that's what occurs when you see the gap itself. Again, whether it's a gap up or it's a gap down, okay? Any questions so far? So this is what you would come and you would learn from me. And it would be through the process of what? Learning the skill set that I know taking a class, which is a two-day class at 16 hours, and getting education. And when you pay for education, it's an investment of your time and it's an investment of your money. It's an investment in what you want to do for your future in the long term. And I think a lot of people are not serious about trading the market and yet do it. But then they are serious in the sense that they risk money consistently all the time. So you say, well, if you're serious enough to open up a trading account, and if you're serious enough to even put a dollar on in a trade, then you're serious. So then why not get really serious about it? I mean, when you look at the course of a year, a year's the people who traded one weekend is nothing. And even the cost of my class, which is six grand, is absolutely nothing when you look at the lifespan that or the time that you could be making money in the market and taking good trades and profiting because there's good trades that go on all the time. I mean, I just talked about two trades in the market that I've even called in the last two weeks. And then we're gonna talk about today's trades, trades that you could have done if you were with me, okay? But a lot of people have a really difficult time accepting that what really the market is. The market is something where you go and you are putting yourself out there and you're taking the risk. The risk is obviously your putting the trade on and you're doing it for the purpose of profit it does not mean that every trade works some trades that I take do not work but more trades that I take work than do not work okay you have to accept what the market is if you decide to do this it's not like a regular job it's not like going into the office and punching a clock every day you do not get a $40,000 a year salary or $100,000 a year salary you go in and you do this and you understand what it is. It is something that you are playing the odds. You put the odds in your favor when you follow a system like mine that has a high odds to work, but it doesn't mean that it will work every time. Nothing does. Even people that are very seasoned that are trading millions and millions and millions of dollars on a regular basis don't win every time. So you have to understand what the market is, accept it what it is, but the, if the benefits exceed the negatives okay the benefits are that you work for yourself you work from home and you can make a lot of money if you know what you're doing so you have to kind of embrace what this is what trading is what the market is what it has to give you and not try to force it or make it something that it that it isn't does that make sense and learning and understanding and gaining a skill set from someone like me that's experienced is very beneficial if you want to get ahead and you want, if you want to make more money and particularly if you're serious about doing it. But I say I say the word serious, but people that risk any money at all are really serious because they're risking their hard-earned money when they take a trade 
without knowing the outcome and usually without even knowing the odds. When I take a trade, I know the odds. I know the odds, okay? That's what my system tells me. These are good odds or, or these aren't good odds. And if they're not good odds, I gotta be honest with you, I don't do the trade. That's something, again, I talk more about in the class. But you've gotta decide what you want, okay? It's very early in the year, it's only April. It's hard to believe it's April. I mean, three months of so far into the year, but it's still really early in the year to get going and decide what you want to do in 2019 with your trading and even with making a possible career change. So what would you learn from me? A 26-point checklist, which is the bulk, the meat and potatoes of the system. This is what I teach in the class. It helps me determine if a stock is good to go long or short or do it or do nothing at all. And that is what I do every morning in the pre-market. You can rate gaps at night, although I usually do not. I wait for the morning. Just like I'm saying the market's up tonight, I could rate it. I could rate it when I'm done here, but I probably won't because I really don't know where it's going to be tomorrow morning. It could be up or it could be down. So I usually wait till right before the open. I also get this question here about experience. Again, you don't need experience. I think I answered this earlier, but... As far as how long it takes you to learn, it's going to take you as long as it's going to take you. Some people learn fast. Some people have a short learning curve. Some people it takes longer. I would be patient with yourself if it takes a little while. I'm here to help you, and you need to know that. But the fact is that you can do this with only a short time investment each day, and that is very positive. Again, the class is two full days, but as far as actively trading during the week, you don't have to sit at your computer the entire time the market's open between 9.30 and 4.00. I, every once in a blue moon, I'll take an afternoon trade, and I might be trading till 4 o'clock, but that's rare, maybe two, three times a month. It's really rare, though. I prefer to be done in and out quickly, okay? So what you would learn from me if you wanted to come and learn my method is a 26-point checklist, which is based on the daily chart of a stock to determine where it's gapping. And I'm looking for a big move in the day. I'm also looking for high odds, as I said, high probability of directional bias for the entire day if possible. Early confirmation, which I want, into the open between 9.30 and 10, and I'm looking for precise entries with a follow-through and a good risk-to-reward target potential. BA today was a good risk-to-reward, okay? And again, we're going to go over that in a minute. People always say, well, how much do you have to risk? Every account is different. If you want to open up a retail trading account, you're going to need 25 grand. If you want to open up a prop trading account, proprietary day trading, if you don't know what that is, ask me or Google it. You, you can open up a prop account with as little as 2500 Either way, how much you risk needs to be based on the size of your cash of your account. All right? And it should go in accordance with that. And you have to look also then at what your margin is or your buying power that you're getting from the broker. Okay? Any questions? But ultimately, you're looking to make money on a consistent basis. I try to get one-to-one -one on most trades. Some I get a little less, some I get a little more. But the objective is definitely to make money consistently. So the process I do is I get up in the morning and then I rate the gap using my checklist. And this is what you learn in the class. I go through it, boom, boom, boom. And I say that there's a good one today or there's no good ones today or there's five good ones today, whatever it happens to be. So here was the play today. Again, it was Boeing. Stock gap down. Stock closed here. Boom. Gap down. And then it opened, rallied, fell, dropped. So I called the BA puts today strike 375 that you could have bought expiring out this coming Friday. And I did that for the purpose knowing that it wasn't going to be a long play. Now, you still could be in this, but... I think today was good as a day trade to take in and get out because I really wasn't sure what the market would do the rest of the week based on what's happening with the Fed meeting minutes on Wednesday. But if you're still in this trade or if you did the trade, you'd still be up into the close and then this could potentially have a bigger move tomorrow. It definitely could. Here is the 15 minutes. Stock closed here, gap down. Open, rally dropped. Boom, here's the move. So here was the 375 number, low in the day was 371 and change. So this was a nice trade. Called it in the morning, took it, boom, drop out. And this is whether you did as a day trade, which will go over in a minute, or you bought the put. So you can day trade options. You can hold them overnight. Or you can day trade the stock, which we did too. But here was the option for an advanced trader risk. And I am going to go over beginner for those people to understand too. Cost was $5. 10 contracts cost what? 5,000. 
Sell price today is six seventy five. This is if you were doing it to get a quick play. You could have made seventeen fifty. That's a nice trade. You take it, you get out. Take it, get out. Okay. Again, you could still be in it though. Here was the beginner risk. One contract, which is a hundred shares, risk was five hundred. You could have made a hundred and seventy five dollars. That's still a nice trade. Okay. So again, you can risk an advanced risk you can risk a beginner risk. This was an option trade and had nothing at all to do with anything other than the cost. The fact that the stock price was this, you didn't have to have margin or buying power to take the trade. So options are a nice way to trade if you don't have a really big account where you don't have to worry about margin, okay? And you can still make money. Any questions on this? Now, at the same time also, actually we did this before, we did the day trade before I called the option. The entry for the short, you could have shorted this today, this is an advanced risk, was 377, shares 600, risk was 2100. Again, this is an advanced risk. Exit 372, which I felt extremely confident would get you today. In fact, those of you that were in the room, didn't I say 372 today? Lefty and Didi were in the room. Man, am I good with numbers. I said 372 today, and I was exactly right. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, holy cow. I hope somebody held us to 372 today. Does anyone that was in the room this morning remember me saying that? Or was I talking to myself? Because I actually said 372. <laughs> I'm going to remind the room that tomorrow morning. Anyways, profit, 3,000, risk to reward, 1.42. Very nice move. Very nice move. And again, the short. And I'm going to go back to the chart here. Boom, do, 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 do. And you could have held it down a little bit more, but I really was extremely confident that 372 was a good number today for this to go. It wasn't a dream target. It was a real number that I said was realistic for this to go to. Okay. Now, if you have a smaller account, Entry 377, shares 100, risk 350. This is a beginner risk. You could have made what? 500 bucks. Again, $500. Very nice move. Okay? Risk reward the same. Any questions on BA? This was today's short. So you could have shorted as a day trade or done the put or done both, which we did. So a lot of people did a lot of different things with this in the room, but really nice move. How did I know this would go? I rated the gap. I watched the setup. You would learn how to take the entries in the class. You learn the targets of the class. You learn the rating system in the class. You learn everything that I know. And that's why it's a worthwhile class to take. But ultimately, one sticker symbol is the way that I like to trade. It's what I like to look at. It's what I like to do. I like to focus on one thing. Even if it's two two types of trades and one ticker symbol, I, I feel a high level of conviction when I'm invested in one thing. All right. Again, your risk still should be the same. If you're doing options and you're risking a thousand in every option trade, fine. If you're doing day trades and you want to risk 500 in every day trade, fine. Your risk needs to be the same though in each trade you do. Does this make sense? Any questions? We're doing good here with time. Anyways, uh, I know why people find day trading hard. They just have a problem focusing. And I'm bombarded by multiple emails daily because, of course, I've done a lot of seminars. And then I get on these lists from the places from people, and I get bombarded too. But I have them go to a separate email, not my normal email. I, I just I get where people are coming from, that they're bombarded by things. But at the end of the day, if you're not focused then it's going to be very challenging for you to make money. You can't be all over the place. And it really comes from me from the personal conviction. It's how I get the confidence to speak on TV with such authority and make the calls I've made and they've turned out to be right. So I'm very focused and I'm very confident. That's something that you can build on yourself. But if you're all over the place with your training, it's going to be difficult for you to ever have confidence in anything. And, you know, I'd love to say, well, you can do this strategy and this strategy and this strategy and this strategy, but you really can't. It's really not about that. And also, if you have something that's really good, why would you ever do anything else but that? So because I have something that's so good, I don't do anything else and I don't need to do anything else. You can do it in multiple ways by doing options and also the day trades. 
But really, it is about the focus. It is about the conviction. I think that's the biggest problem that traders have, besides not having a strategy at all, is that they lack focus and they lack clarity. And that is where they find it very difficult then to make money. Okay. Any comments? Any questions? Anything at all? So what's in store for the market for 2019? Well, we, we shall see. I don't know how we're going to act when we get up to the high, except for the fact that I know we will make a new high. How we act when we get up to it, I'll know when I see it based on the gaps. But of the market so far this year for the first three months of the year has been bullish. It's also made for interesting trading. Earnings season starts this week. The banks report Friday. That's the beginning of earnings season for me. And it will be a very good, solid trading time between now and really the end of May. So it is a time that it's good to get involved. It's good to start doing it because you're going to have a lot of trades. As far as what's in store for this year, again, so far it's been bullish. But there has been shorts to do. And there's been longs to do too. So we do them both. But I tend to look initially in the morning first on the short side. Like BA. Okay. Anyways, if you want to day trade, though, you have to know this is not longer-term investing. It's in, out, in, out, in, out. Whether you're in for an hour or 40 minutes or 15 minutes or five minutes, it's not investing. Investing is long-term, retirement, something like that, wealth creation, where you're in something for weeks and months and years. And even the options trades that I'm calling, you're not in for weeks and months and years. You're in them for a couple of days, two weeks at the most, okay? Three may be in a long shot, but to be honest with you, the the, even the options trades, you're looking to just get a move and get out. Now, that move could happen in one day or it could happen in a series of days, but it's not long-term investing. It's still just making money. That really should be what you're focused on doing. If you're interested in doing this for a living, then sit down, write out all of your goals. How much money do you have to make to, to quit your day job? You need to support yourself and make that amount before you quit your day job. You have to know what your goal is. I look at your goal on a weekly basis, a daily basis, and an annual basis to help you. I say chunk it out because some days you may have to take a loss. So if you look at your goal per week, if that helps, you say, okay, fine. If my goal is to make five grand a week, okay. Well, then you can live with the fact that maybe one day you don't trade because what are you going to do if there's no good gaps one day? You can't force it. You can't make something move if it's not going to move. So looking at it as a whole really helps you achieve the long-term bigger picture for yourself. Some people get so caught up in a day that isn't there or doesn't work out in their favor or even a day where they lose in one trade. You can't get all too caught up into that. You can't blow up your account in one day if it doesn't work out. Everybody has a bad day. Look at it in the bigger picture and I think it will help you. All right. Now, we talked a little bit about this with margin accounts. If you need a referral for a broker, email me. But if you if you have $2,500, you can start prop trading. And that's not a retail account. It's an account with margin where you can actively day trade. If you want to do the options, then you don't need to worry about margin at all. And you can go anywhere where they have options, uh, accounts where you can set up an option account, where you buy the cost of the option. And you don't have to worry about the cost of the stock as far as the margin goes. But the most important thing is learning the system. The system can be applied for options or day trades. Again, the most important thing is following the system. I do not do penny stocks. They are junk or dirt cheap things that are not traded by institutions and have no volume at all. And where people are doing those pump and dumps where they're calling trades. Some of the moderators are calling trades before and they're in the trader ready and they're doing something called a pump and dump. And that is terrible. So we're, we trade stuff that you couldn't move the stock and I couldn't move the stock if we tried. I mean, there's no amount that I could have taken today to actually make BA fall. It did fall in my favor, though, because of the gap. And that's what you want to be invested in. Real things, companies, companies you know, all right? Some are, some are medium priced. Some are more expensive, some are in a $20 range, okay? But they're things that you know, Facebook, Twitter, all that kind of thing. And again, the banks are out at the end of this week on Friday. But I do not take the same size in every trade for the share quantity because I never know what the stop's going to be until I do it. 
So you have to be aware of that too. You kind of have to be a little good with math or if you're not, have a calculator with you if you're in the room with me. She can quick figure it out. If I say 50 by 90, then you gotta say, oh, 40 cents. And you have to know if your risk is 1,000, if your risk is 400, whatever, you need to know how many shares you're gonna take because it will vary from trade to trade, but your dollar amount should not vary, okay? Any questions so far? So I have a gentleman that he's paid for the class. He's doing the class this weekend. He made $1,000 today in BA. He hasn't had the class yet. I, you know, people are making money with me, period, end of story. It's, I'm very happy for a lot of people. Dee Dee said she's doing well. I, you know, I really honestly try to take the time and the energy to support my students who are doing well. And the people that I've found that are doing the best, listen to me, the people that have been struggling and that are up and down, up and down, up and down are the people that don't listen to me. So, I mean, what can I say? I really do know what I'm talking about. You really do have to listen to me. Uh, today was a great example in BA that went to 372. That was amazing. But it's just ultimately about focusing on learning, gaining the skill set, getting good when you're doing it, and you can very quickly, um, you know, start to make money right after the class or even before, like the guy this morning. Any questions? Um, this is Marty. Marty joined the letter, then signed up for the class. So if you want to join the options newsletter, that newsletter is five grand for the year. You get the year's worth of trades. You wouldn't learn the system, but a bunch of people have been signed up for that letter, making money with the options trades and then doing the class. Again, any questions, let me know. Anyways, if you're interested in learning how to trade, the class is this weekend. We talked about some of the ups and downs of trading earlier. And if you wanna work for yourself, it's a decision that only you can make. But I do think it's nice to work for yourself. I'll never work for anyone ever again. And I like working from home as well. So my class is called the Golden Gap System. It's a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade and when and when in what direction. It's a 26 point checklist and it gives you the directional bias for the stock. That's what you learn in the class this weekend. So the class is April 13th and 14th, nine to five Eastern time. Cost of the class is 59.99 US dollars. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Class is online. Email me at melissa at thestockswish.com if you wanna sign up. Deadline is Friday. Then I'm doing the trends class Monday, 64.99 for this combo, say 500 if you wanna sign up for both. And then I'm doing a special through Friday for earnings season, newsletter for the options, and room free to Halloween. This is a good period of time to help people learn, get involved, and into the trades and really get going, getting all my calls. And remember what I said earlier, education is really, you're paying for it. It's an investment in yourself. It's an investment in yourself, which I believe pays off for people when they when they do it, because it's a lot less stressful to follow someone else than it is to try to figure out to do it on your own. And I have a great story. There was a man that, this, this man, he did not do the class in September. He still hasn't done the class. He lost half his account last year. Finally, in March, signed up for the options letter and has been making money hand over fist. I, I don't know if he's gonna do the class in April or not, but either way, he finally, finally signed up for one of my services. And the only service you can join without the class is the options letter. He did it, he signed up. He has been one of the best success stories I have had. He's doing the trades. In fact, I didn't talk to him today to see if he'd do BA, but he's been doing all the trades I've called in the market for the options trades in the last few weeks. He just started in March. I'm certain that he will take the class at some point, if not this weekend. He did not sign up last year and he could have signed up and made money and he waited and waited and waited and he went through so much pain. He almost lost his whole account. He did lost half his account last year because he didn't know what he was doing. And finally, he just said, screw it. I'm going to sign up and he's never been happier. So again, you just kind of have to decide what you want. If you want to get serious about doing it or not because it's gonna be very hard for you to make money if you don't have a good system. And no amount of good money management is gonna create profits for you if you don't have a good system, okay? He is such a good success story. I've, he's, he's had a bunch of testimonials I've already put if you're on my email list. Any questions so far? Anyways, think about it. If you have questions, call me. 2019 is here. 
Any questions for anyone? Again, if you want a trial for this week, email me at info at thestockswoosh.com or melissa at thestockswoosh.com. I think it's going to be a good week. It has been a good start to the month. It's been a great start to the month for the market, a great year. I've called the market very well. Continue to be extremely focused. Watch me on TV. Any questions? Anyone? Galahad, did you do BA today or not? Any questions from anyone? All right. I will let everybody go off to their world. Listen, email me if you have questions about the class. Email me if you have a uh, would like a trial. Call me at 929 gap if you have questions as well. I'll be around this week. Um, got a lot on my plate this week, but I'm here. Kathy, do you have anything? Galahad must be asleep because he didn't answer me. All right, have a great night, everyone. And a very good, profitable day tomorrow. Oh, Galahad did do BA. Okay, good. Once you learn the system, do you need to be in the chat room? No, you can trade on your own. But the chat room is a good support because I call good trades. But I do teach you everything in the class from the rating system to the entries to trade on your own RAM. But I'm very good at what I do. So the chat room is a good support system. I teach and call the trades live. I think after the class it helps. You don't need to be in the room. And not everybody that's done the class in the last seven years is in the room. They're not. They trade on their own. But I'm saying that it's nice right after the class. It's a nice, it's a nice support. And I'm very good at what I do. I've been doing this longer than anyone because I created the system myself, but you don't need it because, I mean, not even half the people I've ever taught are in the room, so you do not need it, but it's nice. Um, how often does the options letter come out? It's whenever I see them. I get that question all the time. I went back and looked. I think I've called 22 trades or 23 trades. I don't even remember. I, I did the tracking last night or Sunday or over the weekend. I forget, I think it was 20, I think I've called 22 option trades since January. I think, don't quote me on that. I did, there's a video on YouTube where I went over, I think it's 22. So that gives you some idea on average, three months, 22 trades. But it's like to say, do I do one every day? No, it's whenever I see one. And that's all that I can say. It's the same thing with day trades, it's like, I can't tell you what we'll do tomorrow, today. Do you know what I'm saying? It's an average. It comes out enough. There's enough trades that it makes it worth it. Let's put it that way. And some of the trades are really big. So as far as quantity, it's not as significant as the, as the, as the quality. And I'm very specific about that, aware of the fact that some of the trades are have to be overnight. So I'm almost even a more specific. Go to YouTube. There is some kind of tracking there. Are there any subjectiveness to picking the entries or would you be able to see what you do once you go through the session? You can just follow the system when you're trading them on your own. Yes. You learn it and you just do the entries. I teach six different entries in the class. When you see the entry, you sets up, you take it. If you don't get the entry, you don't take it. That's why we don't trade in the pre-market. So like for example, BA, yes, you would have just taken the classic entry today in the stock based on the class. But then again, it might not have set up. It did, but we don't do it in the pre-market because what if it doesn't set up on the day? All entries that you would learn are on the live day do you understand what I'm saying? But yes, it's just see them, take them, you learn it in the class. There's six different ones that you'd learn. There's nothing subjective about it. Um, what else? Any other questions? Galahad, you did do BA? Good for you. Excellent. You're on a roll. All right, if anybody thinks of anything else, email me. Go to YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube there. 
Follow me on Facebook or Twitter. And in the meantime, if you'd like a trial this week, email me. XCG, if you want the video, email me. I can just plop it and send you the copy. Rand, you've been following me, I think, for a while. I recognize your name. I don't know when you're going to do the class either, like Bogey. Gosh, I think you've been following me for years. Thank you, Melissa. Okie doke. Very good. All right, have a good night, everyone. You're welcome.